In my previous video, I talked about my trip to Mamco and some of the artwork that I saw there. And I wanted to touch upon the minimalism art movement because it's one that I'm least familiar with. Minimalism was an art movement that started in New York during the 1950s and continued through the 1960s. The painters and sculptors of this movement avoided overt symbolism and emotional content. Some of the key aspects of the movement were geometric compositions, repetition, clean lines, and solid uses of color. They really wanted to call attention to the material of the works themselves. They didn't want any trace of emotion or the artist to be seen in the work. These artists instead wanted to make objects that were as impersonal and neutral as possible. In order to really understand why minimalism came about, it's important to situate it in art history. In the 1940s and 50s, a new form of abstract art was developed called Abstract Expressionism. Abstract Expressionism favored art that was personal, emotional, spontaneous. Jackson Pollock is a really great example of an abstract expressionist painter. He developed a technique called action painting. Paint would be randomly splashed, thrown, and poured onto the canvas. He even put canvases on the floor and would walk across them. In some of his paintings, you can even see footsteps in them. So minimalist artists decided that they didn't like this work. They didn't like how personal and subjective it was. They thought too much of the artist's own influences and ideas were present. And they really wanted to distance themselves from this type of work, this abstract expressionism. As Carl Andre put it, they were trying to present wood as wood, steel as steel, aluminum as aluminum, a bale of hay as a bale of hay. Normally art was hung discreetly on the wall or placed on a pedestal in a corner. What the minimalists were doing was changing how the viewer interacted with the work. Because there wasn't much to look at, suddenly the space that the work occupied was very important and how it was positioned in the space mattered. Even light was seen as a material with its own presence. Donald Judd was one of the main thinkers and creators in this minimalist movement. Like he Donald Judd rejected the idea that a picture could represent the world. Like you have landscape paintings, um, portraits. Minimalists wanted art to live and exist in its own reality and not be an imitation of some other thing. And he was really concerned about the truth. He felt minimalism got to the truth. Frank Stella made these paintings known as the black paintings. Stella used commercial paint that he bought for one dollar a gallon and just simple paint brushes. He painted stripes on a canvas and that was it. When Stella presented these paintings made with a few bucks worth of paint and just said here they are, what you see is what you get kind of, um, it was really revelatory. Stella was a major influence for Carl Andre. In 1966, Carl Andre entered a sculpture titled Lever into an exhibition. It was a row of 137 fire bricks that went from the wall straight across the floor. It was startling to visitors to see a bunch of bricks on the floor being called art. It kind of pose the thought anyone could do it. Like if a bunch of bricks can be put into a gallery and called art, what is art? <laughs> and that's still how a lot of people feel today. When I look at this work, I, it, it did, it frustrated me. It felt almost unfair that this work was 
um, being praised so highly. Like, that's great. That's exactly what these works were meant to do, to frustrate. It wasn't forcing change or making people change their mind, but it was posing a challenge to viewers. Without understanding this background and history of the movement, it can be really difficult for a person to walk into an art gallery or museum, see a <laughs> concrete block on the floor and be like, ah, like, yeah, wow, I, I love it. There's this great quote by a British author named Keith Waterhouse who gave his reaction to Carl Andre's equivalent eight. Um, in 1966. And he said, bricks are not works of art. Bricks are bricks. You can build walls with them or chuck them through jewelers, windows, but you cannot stack them too deep and call it a sculpture. I would love to hear your thoughts on minimalist art, on anything I've really talked about. If you feel differently, if you have and any additional knowledge, please share it in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed listening, watching this video, and thank you so much for doing so. And I'll see you next time. Bye!